Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters So my name is Mustafa Ahmed So today we're going to continue talking about the trials and tribulations And the timeline Exactly how the timeline is supposed to work So in the first and second episode We talked about like kind of dates Right And we talked about how With Islamic eschatology everything's like a puzzle And we're trying to put, the, put these pieces Puzzle pieces together So today and, and and what gives us an advantage of how to put these together Is that there's a man named by Muhammad Qasim bin Abdul Karim. He's been getting dreams in which Allah and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam have come to him in his dreams, kind of telling him about future events that are going to unfold. Right? And the point of the discussion is talk about them right now. So if they do unfold, it's to take heed of these things before more things unfold, right? So the first thing I talked about the overview, and then the second thing I talk about the first part, the second part, and which is the the minor signs, which we kind of currently we're in, and almost that we're done, and now the bridge, which is the Mahdi, and then the major signs, right? So, what I want to talk about is the specific time period of the Mahdi, and something called Ghazwat Hin, which is very, I think, it's very significant. So, uh, I'm gonna leave a description to uh, certain Ghazwat Hin stuff. Um, so, you, if you want more information about it, you can get it. But pretty much. Most Muslims don't know what Ghazwat Hind is And if they do, they think it's what happened in the past Right? During the Mughal Empire when they conquered India um, Unfortunately, I don't think that's the correct opinion Just because uh, There's a hadith that says Abu Hurairah says um, There's two camps of Muslims Who are free from the hellfire The first one is the one who are going to participate in Ghazwat Hind And the second one is the, the camp of Isa ibn Maryam So it shows you a very close connection of Ghazwat Hind Versus End times, right? So it cannot have happened in the past. And um, what's so significant about Ghazwat Hind is as if it's going to be the last final battle between Kufr and Iman. It's just like the Battle of Badr was, right? It was between Kufr and Iman. So if the Muslims were wiped out on the Battle of Badr, that's it. There is no more Islam on earth. Same same way that situation would happen again, where there is only going to be a small camp of Muslims. And if those Muslims are wiped out completely, then that's it. There is no more Islam on earth. So that's the significance of that battle. And therefore Allah intervened. As he intervened in Badr, he also intervenes in Khazwatin. According to Muhammad Qasim's dreams. And this is very significant too because it kind of pieces um, different things together. So a lot of people, again, they think Khazwatin either happened or they're not aware of it. And the reason we're not aware of it is because um, people from the Indo-Pakistan region, um, they are very aware of it from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan. Because they, they understand the hadith very well. However, people... In the Arab countries, right? So I'm, I'm Arabic. I'm actually Egyptian. We're never taught this, right? And maybe I'm, I'm putting my biases in it. But most Muslims who I talk who are Arab, they're unaware of this hadith of the Ghazwat Um And the significance is that you, you get a bigger, broader picture together. So, for example, we know that Imam Mahdi, we're that there's a group from Kharasan coming out. We're having the black banners, black fa flags and black banners that are going to come help him. And they said, and the Prophet said, whoever sees that banner, make sure that you go give the Mahdi Bayah because he's be going to be amongst them. Right? So when I was studying Islamic eschatology, I always thought that um, the Mahdi is going to come after World War III and because they're going to be, you know, with flags, with horses, with swords, with arrows, and it's not going to be modern technology. However, I don't. According to the dreams of Muhammad Qasim, I don't think that's the reality. I think it is modern warfare, right, with modern weapons and modern technologies. And what I think the black uh, black banners or the black flags are referring to the black um, black fighter jets, according to the dreams, right? So, and there's a very interesting correlation. As I said, in the Battle of Badr was so significant that whoever fought in that battle is pretty much they had a different status, a different elevation than anybody, any other Muslims, right? The same so, those Muslims who fight in the Ghazwat al Hind, they're gonna have a very different elevation, different status, right? So much so that most of them who are survived from it are gonna be with Isa alayhi salam, connecting the both that hadith together. That the people from Ghazwat al Hind will also be most likely the people who are gonna be with Isa alayhi salam at the time of the Dajjal. So the way I put it was that. The Malhamah is going to start happening And Allah Alam if it happens soon or not And in the midst of that Which Pakistan According to dreams 
rises into power in great succession, great speed, right? Within that six year period while the war is going on. At that time, most countries in the Middle East, at least, and most Muslim countries are gone. Turkey falls and Saudi Arabia falls, according to the dream. And most of the majority countries in the Middle East. And therefore, um, at the same time, India wants to distinguish or extinguish the light of Pakistan, which would be the last castle of Islam. And not only would India be fighting Pakistan alone, they would have the help of 80 other banners, 80 other countries. And at this point, those Muslims who stand strong, right? Which I'm going to connect another hadith and Allahu Alam if this is related. But the Prophet said, there's 80 banners that are going to come against you. The battle is going to be so, so significant, right? That one third of the army is going to run away. And this one third of the army, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Right? Because once you run away from that army, you kind of destroy the morale of everybody else in that 